Thank you all. Thank you for inviting me to the Transportation and Climate Change Conference. And thank you all of the attendants for being here, especially to the sponsors and uh, to Edipors Group to allow me to represent probably uh, the group in this, in this conference. So uh, following a little bit the speech of Dr. Ibrahim, which uh, has been very interesting, um, my point will be also following on how we have to cooperate. It was not working on silos, one of your last sentences, and probably it will be uh, a little bit of the motto of what we're going to talk about today, right? Uh, first of all, let me introduce a little bit what's NOARUM for you. It will be a short presentation on what are uh, our impact or our influence in the supply chain management. So Noatum is a global company owned by Ediports Group and uh, with presence in 31 countries uh, worldwide and we are operating 17 terminals, one of them here in Khalifa port in Abu Dhabi and the rest in Spain and with uh, an ambition to grow in, uh, in, uh, in all of the world. Uh, we are specialists in the automotive sec sector where we are leaders in, in Europe and in Spain especially and also with uh, leadership in, um, uh, I don't know, the steel segments and in the um, agribull segment, uh, segments uh, in, in the country. So uh, the conference will pivot, first of all, like uh, Dr. Ibrahim uh, mentioned a little bit about the challenges that we're fa uh, facing, but in another segment, which is the port segment, instead of the of the um, um, uh, vision of the shipyards and other, other parts of the industry. And we are having mainly four challenges to address. The first of all is technology. Technology, because of the lack of standardization, is one of the key points which is uh, having an impact on us. It's very difficult to align the solution for uh, technologies with, which will help in to transform the way of um, uh, operating in a cleaner and a greener way. Uh, the other three impacts that we will have in the, in the technology is the lack of capacity. There is no capacity spread in all of the ports that we operate and neither worldwide. So it's very difficult to our clients to choose what it will be the solution. Shipping lines, if they will go for ammonia supply, they will go for green hydrogen, if they will go for uh, cool ironing, it's very difficult to uh, uh, get for a standard. So standardization, it's a, it's a problem. Uh, with um, a lack of, uh, let's say, reliability in some of the technologies and also the impact of cost. Um, there is another factor which uh, we may agree which is impacting or challenging our development uh, or transition to greener energies. It is the uh, huge investments that we have to, to address that sometimes involve a cooperation between private and uh, public sector. So this coordination between the investments uh, between the entities, public and private entities, it's sometimes a challenge and uh, makes an extra uh, handicap for uh, progressing in these huge investments that are required. The third one is the diverse maturity across the world and geographies and uh, stakeholders in the, in the path to, 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 to need zero which means that we are not in the same page. So it's a little bit of the silo concept. If we work on silos, it will be very difficult to progress in this uh, development. And uh, there is another challenge is, uh, again, in coordination or in the way to uh, align our perspective or the way to arrive to, to, to the need zero or to green ener energies is how uh, all of the elements of the supply chain and, uh, are aligned into, 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 into give solutions and provide solutions to the market. So there is no reason to make super efficient sea transport and thereafter put uh, a container or a iron coil into a truck which is contaminating for 1,000 kilometers across the overland, right? So th this, this cooperation is super necessary. However, there are not only challenges, there are opportunities, and we have to convert these challenges into opportunities, and the opportunity is the customers, the market. So uh, transition to greener energy is not only uh, a must, it's not only that we need to do, all of us are in the same world, so breathing the same air, so we are clients of the same world, I would say, 
but uh, also it's a business opportunity. So this transition becomes to be uh, uh, an opportunity from the point of view of the projects that are being developed. But on the other hand, um, uh, it's a must, it's a requirement for our clients more and more to uh, any tender on any vetting process, and we will be measured on how green we are or how we help them to be greener. Um, also, our investors in their ESG programs uh, are more and more focused on uh, measuring the green and the investments must be greener. So, uh, port industry is asset intensive, obviously, is a lot of infrastructure and it's required to have, um, um, I would say, uh, a, a, a proposal to the investors of green solutions across the, 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 the terminals and, and assets that we are putting on the table. Um, and not only that, but also there is a trend of a lot of industries that to achieve the need zero need to promote these green opportunities, these green facilities, these contributors to a greener world as part of their portfolio of assets. Uh, sometimes we don't do the things because we are motivated, but because we are obliged, right? And this is the part that we are in part obliged to comply. So regulations across the world are becoming harder and harder. Uh, there are the um, um, rights of emission that the ships are paying uh, in Europe, for example. Uh, there are a lot of uh, penalties and, uh, and also uh, some uh, uh, state aids for green development. So uh, regulations and uh, the norms that we have to follow when we are considering our investments are under the pressure of regulators in order to do so. So these three factors are driving in another, I think, as a summary in a result that our productivity and competitiveness are somehow um, um, dri driven by the, uh, 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 the, the, the regulations, uh, so we, we become less cost effective if we are fine because we are super emissions and our clients are not in position to make the trade uh, paying less rates of, of carbonization or we have to make super difficult programs if, uh, if we are not, uh, uh, pro if our productivity or operating standards are not uh, matching the regulations and the, uh, 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 the ways that the clients are asking for us to, to deliver the service. Last but not least, the clients will require for us not to pay less, but to be greener. So as a result, in Noadom and in the, uh, 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 on our uh, ESG program, we have got four pillars. As you see, two of them are purely related with the environment and the climate protection. And these are driving in several actions that we are moving forward. So some of them uh, that I can mention is obviously the transition of uh, port equipment into greener equipment or the designing of the new infrastructures in a greener way, avoiding emissions, uh, or uh, protecting the marine pollution and some other factors. And obviously, the training, the cultural change, and the management program of environment is part of it. But I, I think Dr. Ibrahim mentioned that 3% is the portion of the marine traffic impact into the global urbanization. So from this 3%, the ports, it's ranging less than 3% again. So we are, as a magnitude now, depending on the trade, in less than 1% of impact into, 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 the, into the carbonization and the carbon footprint of, of worldwide. But is only the role of the ports as themselves is what we do in ourselves, or are the impacts in different, in different ranges or circles of impact? So it's what we're going to talk here. First of all, what are we doing in the ports in order to change our carbon footprint impact? Second, how we facilitate our stakeholders to be greener? And third, how we transform, or we are key factors to transform the world into a greener solution. So as a terminals, we are doing all necessary to lower and, uh, and, and netting our greenhouse gases and carbonization. 
by uh, reduction in our port operations through uh, changing the port equipment, being more efficient, redesigning all of the layouts, uh, changing our operational patterns, and so on and so on and so on, which at the end of the day also reflects in a more efficient and productive uh, port operation. We are um, uh, also taking care of the air pollution so uh, as an, and par particle emissions. And we, we have got this in our DNA. The first facility in Spain that was built in order to discharge polluting uh, goods, polluting commodities with zero particle emissions, it was ours, it was in Santander, where the goods discharged from the vessel never see the, the, sun, the, 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 the light of sun and they are just isolated from the environment. The marine pollution also is a mass. Our uh, automotive terminals have got their technical centers recovering 80% of the water used for washing the cars uh, 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 into, uh, into consideration. And uh, we also use sustainable criteria for uh, our uh, con terminal construction. And obviously, we are, as I mentioned, integrating this on our uh, management system. And uh, we are conducting a cultural change in order to keep this in motion. But as I said, it's not as important what we uh, do for uh, ourselves, but what we do for our stakeholders. So uh, uh, we um, are using um, uh, sustainable solutions in our port interland connections. We are making huge investments, for example, in connecting to rail. Uh, so the ports become a gateway connected through the final destination in greener and lower emission. And good example is here the strong um, moving forward that uh, Khalifa Port is having through Etihad Rail and Nuatun Rail in order to promote the rail transportation. But in Spain also we are being gateway of traffic that formerly were going uh, steaming by ships to the north of Europe, all around Europe, and now these charts in Barcelona, in Valencia, and in Sagunto, and on our four terminals, and then rail it to the north of Europe by rail. Um, then, um, uh, also, we facilitate the transformation of our cl clients on greener. So, one of the segments that we are leading is fertilizers, and we are helping our fertilizers clients into transforming their industry in, product in production of green ammonia. And for this, we have to invest in the ports in order to change the pattern of inbound commodities that they are and materials that they are needing for this green ammonia uh, 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 um, fabrication, and then the outbound products and, and the distribution of the green ammonia for other purposes. Uh, so this, 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 we also have invested in uh, in the necessary power supply to the terminals to be ready when the demand is there for the coal ironing. Uh, so uh, this is a part of the challenges of the standard, standardization programs. And this results in reduced port stay uh, when we are becoming more efficient and also in less truck waiting times uh, since we are diverting a lot of traffic from truck to rail. So not only what we do for ours, not only what we do for our stakeholders, but how we do help complete industries to change. And uh, three examples I would like to mention here. Rural automotive terminals as facilitator of the electric car deployment worldwide. So it couldn't happen in Europe, and in Europe has been one of the places where the electric vehicle has impacted in a higher uh, uh, proportion without the role of our terminals being connected by rail and uh, adapting the capacity and the uh, facilities to the demand of a huge invention of electric vehicle. Also, the role of uh, auto terminal Khalifa has, has been super important and become a hub distributor in the region to support this deployment. The second, for example, is industries which are game changers in the renewables industry as the offshore wind will not happen without the proper port facilities in there. So having the appropriate facilities and investments in the ports is key in order to allow these um, uh, technologies to expand worldwide. Um, other uh, sister technology, which is the onshore wind, with the length of the blades that now are over 90 meters, that they are targeting 95 meters length, they are not easily 
uh, uh, transportable in most of the uh, uh, regions by, by truck. So it is needed that this is done through the ports. Last but not least, solar panels, solar energy needs huge projects and a full network of the shipping industry which in, the, in which the ports are playing a super role. So um, as conclusion, I would say that first of all, uh, in either ports group and Noatum as one of the invested companies of the group, we are fully committed for this need zero trans uh, the transition. Second, uh, to say that uh, the ports industry is not impacting just in the own carbon footprint that we are producing, but also how we facilitate our uh, stakeholders to uh, the evolve into a, a greener future, and also to the world through relevant changes in the pattern of uh, supply of energy worldwide. And uh, thank you for your attention and looking for a great future greener in, in, uh, with you, uh, you guys. Thank you so much.